Hi, and welcome back to the NFSTI video tutorial series. Today's topic is going to be courseware and the DS Core 2011 REO exam. As usual, we've started you off on the home page here. A couple of uh, changes have been made since we've last met. Uh, we changed the, uh, the profile name here to demo account, so you can kind of follow the demo account in real time online. And then we've got a little, um, I don't know, like a webinar type uh, image here for its avatar. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and move into today's topic of discussion, which is how to navigate around in this this certified REO program. Um, when you signed up and you opted for premium or expert membership, you were entitled to the the NFSTI DS Core 2011 REO certification exam. There was a couple of precursors to uh, being able to, to take this exam and for it to mean anything. The first being the obvious, you should and must be a licensed real estate agent uh, in good standing in your state. Uh, we, we can't allow you to, to take this exam and represent multiple states as well. So if you happen to have a couple of neighboring states, maybe you're in Washington, D.C. and you also happen to be in Virginia, uh, that's perfectly fine. You only have to take the exam once. <clears throat> Now let's uh, talk a little bit about the name, uh, the NFSTI, obviously that's our organization, the National Foreclosure and Sales Training Institute. Uh, DS Core, which stands for Default Servicing, so it encompasses a little bit more than just the REO industry, DS uh, Default Servicing, being a little bit more broad term uh, under the distressed property category in residential real estate. So we're going to be talking not just about the REO side of, of the issues, but also valuation or BPO side of things, as well as a little bit on the short sale side, uh, loan modification, loss mitigation, and things like that. Uh, they all kind of are stitched together nowadays, and the days of just understanding one or the other have seems to have been long gone. Uh, DS Core, the core part of the word being that uh, we're talking about the foundation or the, the primary knowledge that is required prior to the onset of this uh, career choice. Uh, without this type of information, uh, you can certainly go in and apply and find work. However, what you're going to find are there are going to be some struggles, particularly when you're asked about your credentials or you're asked about certain uh, aspects of the business that require a certain knowledge level of uh, terminology, definitions, and uh, the experience itself. So this is a really great way to help push you out into the, the real world a little bit better in a controlled environment. Uh, and, and then lastly, uh, you're going to be um, expected to have some experience when you go out and start seeking this business, and if you don't, it does help to have a certification, albeit it's not required. However, it does show that you've taken the, the uh, steps to understanding the business that will make your clientele feel that uh, their, their inventory, their product, their assignments are safe in your hands. They don't have to worry about following up. They know that you're going to get the job done, you're going to get it done right, and you're going to get it turned in on time. All right, and then lastly, this is for 2011. Uh, this series is being done in early 2011, and this exam only represents this year alone. We do updates every year, and that's because there are just way too many frequently updated aspects to this industry to take one exam one time and have it be uh, representative of multiple uh, eras of the default servicing uh, industry. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the functionality of the website and how to get into your DS Core group and then how to navigate around, download the instruction manual, listen to the online audio files, and then finally take and pass the exam. First, let's go ahead and hit our groups button from the home page up on the top navigation bar. In the groups directory, you're going to find one of the groups down here with the blue feather DS Core logo that is called the DS Core ARIO Certification 2011 group. In this case, the demo account has already been accepted into this group. It is private, so you're not going to get in right away. You're going to want to make sure that you take a day or two to prepare for this uh, prior to trying to take the exam. Don't wait till the last minute because there is a chance that the administrator or the proctor of that group won't see a request for another 24 hours, especially if it's the weekend or if it happens to be after normal business hours. So we've been accepted into this group. 
Uh, we don't have to uh, click anything else. Normally, we would have requested membership, like, it's see, like you can see here in, in the NFSTL All Stars group. You would just request membership, and then the button would switch over, and it would say membership requested, just like so. And then once it's accepted by the admin or proctor, it'll change over to leave group, giving you the option to, to depart from this particular group or class at any given point in time, and then return if it's um, so, so you choose. Let's go ahead and enter the group now, and we're going to read about uh, the, the uh, group itself, and we're going to navigate through the group. So now that we've clicked into the DS Core REO Certification 2011 group, we've essentially set foot into the classroom. Prior to this, you can think of it as you're walking around in the hallways because you're on the NFSTI virtual campus. Uh, once you log into NFSTI for the first time, that's like setting foot on the campus as a registered uh, student or member. And then uh, as you're walking down the hallways, those are all the different categories and the different groups and the different activities. And now we've actually uh, taken the initiative to step foot into the DS Core REO Certification 2011 classroom. So everything that you would expect, expect in a classroom is here. So what, what are those things? And let's just find out. Uh, first of all, the group has been outlined and described for you briefly up here at the top, so you can feel free to take the time to read that. I recommend leaving yourself at least an hour the first time that you've come through here, and you're going to be taking the exam, downloading the materials, getting ready. <clears throat> when you do take the exam, I recommend setting aside an additional hour. That way you can go uninterrupted for that duration, and nothing will happen. The um, the computer won't log you out, it won't shut down, it won't go to sleep on you, things like that, and uh, you won't lose your exam results. So let's scroll down a little bit. As we've discussed in the past, once you get into a group, you now have another set of uh, navigation buttons, and right here they are in the dark gray field with the blue highlights. We're currently on the home page, so if I want to follow all the information that's being posted to this particular group, I can click this RSS feed right here. Let me just do it for demonstration purposes. And that's going to allow me to uh, accept the, the RSS feed. Right there it is. And anytime anybody makes an update within this particular group, it's going to notify me in my reader. Nice way to stay organized and see what kind of updates have been made. Great Google Reader, a great uh, RSS feeder that I use. I just gave it away. There is Google. Um, since I use Gmail and I use Google Calendar and Google Documents, the Google Reader is, is a uh, natural segue into RSS reading. Okay, let's take a step back again. We've looked at what's uh, in the home area. This is where I can make any kind of post updates, like I can say, you know, doing another demo video about this group. However, if it was something uh, to the nature of, you know, I just read over the readings and uh, I had a couple questions about some of the things, maybe there was a typo, maybe there was something that didn't seem right, or maybe it was outdated and it needs to be updated, I could simply state that right in here. The uh, proctor or the teacher of the course or an admin can see that and respond to it and make those adjustments. Also, it lets the other members know that, hey, there's something going on that I've noticed. Maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't notice, but you may want to take note and then simply post the update. And there it goes. And it'll pop up in just a second right here. There it is. Somebody can feel free to reply to it. Uh, mark it as their favorite, favorite, whatever they'd like to do. As you can see, other people have made other uh, comments, uh, posts, things that can help out uh, the other students, the other members in going through the exam. There we go. All right. Back up a little bit. Let's jump over to the next button on our navigation bar within this classroom. And that's called Courseware. Courseware is the official software that we use to administer these uh, courses. It contains anything you would think of underneath a course, so any assignments that are made, any exams, readings, bibliographies, anything that has to do with the course itself is under Courseware. On the first page, we have everything at a glance. So right off the bat we can see that there's three assignments, there's been four responses to different topics that have been discussed, 
There's currently no schedule because this is a uh, study at your own pace. Uh, there's no bibliography entries because everything was written in-house. And then uh, zero assignment discussions. So if we were to have a, uh, an assignment that required a discussion of some sort, that's where it would be. And then you can see a nice calendar off to the side if there was any deadlines coming up, such as uh, schedules that would be listed here, like uh, let's say there was a live exam on the 31st of March, then you would see March 31st would be lit up and it would correspond to this schedule here. Down a little bit lower you can see some of the latest assignments and latest responses. So if you want to kind of catch up on what's been happening, uh, not much takes place there because most of everybody comes in, downloads the material, and then takes the exam at their own pace, like I said. Scrolling up a little bit, you're going to see a couple of other subcategories underneath courseware. Aside from home, which is where we're at, there's also course description. Let's take a quick look at that. The course description gets into the DS Core ARIO certification 2011 and it tells you how to begin. This is a nice place to begin to get your, your direction, your footing. Under assignments, we can see the various assignments for whatever class it is, in this case the, the DS Core ARIO certification, and this is exactly where we want to be in order to download the instruction manual, listen to the audio files, and then take the exam. As you can see, there are three hyperlinks here. Read the manual, listen to the corresponding audio files, and then take that exam. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, certification manual. It's a PDF document. Feel free to share it with your coworkers and colleagues. Uh, they won't be able to take the exam because they have to be members for that, but we certainly don't mind you sharing this material because it is helpful to everybody in the industry. Once you've hit that download hyperlink, as you saw me do there just a moment ago, you'll see it download right immediately in a PDF document to the desktop of your computer. From here you can print it, save it, read it, whatever you prefer. And there it is. It's 159 pages. Everything's highlighted for you. We've got everything answered. We've got images to help illustrate. Should be everything that you need. For the last few minutes of our, our discussion here, we'll take a look at the exam itself the last few topics up here, forum, members, and send invites, simply mean that there is a forum for discussion. Typically, uh, most everybody puts their discussions on the home page, and then the uh, uh, members just indicates who's, who's all uh, in this course. And then lastly, the invitations. You can send that out to somebody who you're friends with online here on NFSTI in case they happen to not be in this group yet and you want them to be aware of it. So here's the exam. There's instructions to start and then go down to the hyperlink here and you can click go to exam. And once you've done that you're gonna go to the test page. This is where I say set aside a good hour and uh, uninterrupted sit down and start hacking away on this. First read the instructions very carefully. We've listed everything out that you need to know including the passing score which must be an 80% or higher. If you fail the first time through, that's okay. You'll be able to take the exam right away again. However, I will warn you that we document every score. So we keep those around for auditing purposes in case a client ever wants to see somebody's scores or it becomes a question of whether or not somebody passed successfully or not. And then it's simply a matter of multiple choice and choosing the correct answer in these radio buttons. It's as simple as this going through and selecting whatever the answer is. Once you're finished and you feel like you've got the best answers possible for every question, all 50 of them, down at the very bottom you simply click this button that says submit and finish. Once that happens the score will immediately be transferred to the administrator. The administrator will be notified and within 48 to 72 hours we'll be checking on those, checking on scores, and notifying you whether or not you passed. That should do it for today's course on courseware and the REO exam. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you again next time when we discuss wikis and forums.